Greetings and welcome back to the Dicey Cantina. It's the second Tuesday of the month. That means I'm joined by AJ and Mark for Hop Company. This month, I'm going to be your GM, finally. It's been a little while. Uh, not that I didn't appreciate the break wholeheartedly. And tonight, I'm going to try my hand at a new game. Uh, we are playing Vason, the mythic Britain and Ireland expansion. Super excited about this. This Nordic horror game now set in England for us tonight. So, I'm going to be playing a more pre-scripted adventure. Everything else we've done up until this point has been more of our own creations or the creators of the games themselves. Um, but we're going to take a page out of this book. Uh, I've kickstarted it last year and it looks really exciting. So, uh, bear with me, guys, as I kind of learn a whole new system. 
Uh, I'm a little bit new to this, uh, and by a little bit, I mean a whole lot. I've read through the book. I've read through the story, um, but we're going to see where it takes us. Uh, it will likely be at least a couple sessions long, uh, but we're going we're gonna to play and have a good time. Let's do uh, some character introductions to start. Uh, who's playing who tonight? Who wants to go first? I'll go first. I am playing Padre Libre. I am playing a priest. What else you want? <laughs> I am a priest. I have a big Bible. I carry some fine communion wine. And, and where are you from, Padre Libre? Oh, I originated in Spain, and I spent some time with the priest in South America and the men to Mexico, and now... You know, I got a letter, and I'm heading back to see my friend. Excellent. And he's joined by? Billy Harkness. I am from the States. Uh, the, uh, the society, these, uh, these folks that deal with these strange occurrences, it's uh, an international thing. It's not just England. It's not just uh, uh, up north. But uh, we've got a we've got a branch over here in the states. Uh, so Billy's a former soldier, uh, and uh, yeah, one time he saw some soldiers rise back to life on the battlefield, and uh, from then on, he was convinced that strange things exist in this world, things that uh, defy our common notions. Excellent. And that's what that's the experience that gave Billy what's called the uh, sight, I believe. Yes, the sight is. It is also, it is also his trauma. His trauma. Mm -hmm. That's right. A trauma creates the ability for members of the society to have the sight. The sight gives you uh, the ability to see things that other folks can't see. The horrors uh, and things of ghosts and whatnot. Um. Padre Libri, don't feel that you have to share, but uh, what was your trauma that gave you the sight? Oh, well, uh, I don't like to, you know, it is a horrific story. Uh, we were, we were at the mission and, you know, we were with the peoples and, uh, you know, we were looking after things. It was late at night. Everything was buttoned up and some banditos came in and they started trying to rob the place. We didn't have much, but... You know, uh, we had enough that they wanted, and all of a sudden, something came out of our mission and started ripping them all apart. Uh, I I was the only one left alive. And uh, at that moment, I knew that the Bible was true, and, you know, the scriptures, everything in them was crazy. And I had to look into it more, and I could see more. And I knew the Lord was with me, because I survived, and I have some work to do. And so I, too, joined up with the society, knowing that there's more to than meets the eye. And as we dive into things, I should specify, because I, I mentioned it to you guys before we were going to play, but this being a game with a horror setting, uh, Free League Publishing was kind enough to add some content warnings to things that they have in there. We strive to be family-friendly and all of that, but I feel since we're going to do... Uh, a game that is written for uh, is a written adventure that we include those on there. So we've got uh, the warning for violence, child death, and uh, mutilation. So if those things are an issue for you, I can't promise you that they won't come up. Again, we try and be family friendly. But what uh, I'm going to dive back into the, the game after that sidebar. Uh, what brought Billy and Padre Libre together. How do you guys know each other in the society? Billy oh, just well, showed up one day. <laughs> Billy just showed up one day. And and uh and the good padre was there. He was very fortunate. Uh I think we were after a chupacabra at the time. And uh, you know. It okay, was pretty so nice. Did it we was, you know we met in the southwest then? Well, of like course. The, it was uh, the, the Albuquerque chapter. <laughs> the Albuquerque, Albuquerque chapter. chapter. Yep, Mission Albuquerque. I love it. They had the good beans. <laughs> awesome. Uh, if it's not apparent to everybody, we are going to be butchering some accents all night long. 
So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Sit back and yeah, enjoy. That, yeah. That's why we didn't want to do, you know, the uh, Swedish one because I would just be doing, you know, you know, the chef from the Muppets <laughs> the whole time. So, oh, awesome. So, you guys are at the London chapter of the society currently. And our good friend Sam from the Starbirds podcast helped me out for your call to adventure this evening, Padre Libre in particular. You received a letter, and uh, Sam's going to read that for us. My dear friend, I fear I have been remiss in failing to keep up our acquaintance. The correspondence of our student days was most enlightening for me, and I dare hope that you found some diversion in it as well. I still dabble in local archaeology and folklore, and have read a little in the London newspapers about recent discoveries in your country. I wish I were writing now to renew our acquaintance and to propose further exchanges on such fascinating matters, but I have another purpose. Certain troubling events around the village where I serve as curate of the church reminded me of our discussions concerning the legends surrounding certain standing stones and their connection in folklore with tales of witches hags, and other troll folk. More than that, a young woman is dead, horribly murdered, and her former suitor is in danger of hanging for the crime. Since the unfortunate girl's body was found, our village has been in the grip of winter. Frosts as bitter as those of February blight the flowers of June, and some creature, perhaps a wolf, though none has been seen in these parts for four centuries at least, has been driven by the cold to prey on farmers' livestock. Other strange occurrences have added to the woes of the local people, and there is talk of a curse. In our student days, you hinted at some knowledge, some resource that you could bring to bear in unraveling mysteries of this nature. If you do indeed have it in your power to investigate our situation and bring the truth to light, then I beg you to do me the honor of visiting. My home is humble, but it is at your disposal. I await your reply eagerly and hope for the pleasure of renewing our acquaintance in person. Sincerely yours, Edgar Longby, M.A. Cantop, Curate of the Parish of St. Biran, Brancombe. There you are, Father Padre Libre, man. <laughs> yes, Edgar was, you know, very enthusiastic as a young one. How, how did you he know the Edgar? Best. He's the best. Okay. Well, after, you know, uh, I saw all those people horribly mutilated, uh, I f figured it was a good time to delve deeper into our studies, and uh, I met up with the society who put us through uh, our priesthood uh, so we can get some of that extra knowledge, and, uh, you know, one thing led to another, and, you know, we kind of met up. Awesome. So that brings you to London, where uh, Billy has just shown up one day. And then you guys went to Albuquerque. Uh, and now you're back. The first stage in any adventure in Basin is the you have the opportunity to prepare before heading on a journey out to Brancombe. Would you like to take advantage of that? Well, of course. You would. Yeah? Uh, what would you guys describe as you're doing to prepare for your journey out there? I think we've got to do some research. Absolutely. Um, and uh, out, out, of, out of character, we want to figure out what our, what our advantage is going, going in. Mm -hmm. Something that'll will give us uh, an additional two dice on on one roll later on. Um, so I think uh, can you can you tell us what the what the London Society headquarters is mm -hmm. like? I can. I think that's written for me. Let me see. I think it is too. It must be in the book. I didn't kickstart. Yes. I got to not imitate that. <laughs> I have so many regrets. Uh, that was a good good question, Mark. And I'm covering as I realized I didn't have that one particular piece of information pulled up. Uh, 
Parliament? Da, 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 da. Well, it certainly has a library. Uh, absolutely has a has a library. And a mysterious butler. Mm-hmm. That sounds right. How can it not have a mysterious butler? It's not in my digital tools, but it is in this book. Would you like to name the butler since I'm behind the times here? Reginald. Reginald. Yeah. Reginald is... Uh, he's, he's the sort of person where you just can't tell how old he is. Mm. He could be, he could be in his thirties. He could be in his sixties. He's just, there's something a little bit off about him. He's timeless. I like that. Yeah. All right. Well, what do we want the society in London to look like? Since I'm not currently finding that page of sure. the l wonderful write-up that they did do, and I did read once. I don't I, have it memorized. I'm picturing uh, warm woods, um, like everything's wood paneling, uh, big staircase in the front room. Um, let's see. It all just looks like like a smoking room. There's mm -hmm. probably uh, a big library in the uh, upstairs, um, an office that nobody really knows whose it is, uh, a basement that nobody ever goes down into. Mm -hmm. Does it have old timey, old uh, ancient stones hidden in corners and stuff like that? Like, uh, Not, not not necessarily headstones, but uh, well, carved stones, stones, yeah, and stuff like that, like inscribed stones here and there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it's also got a a big circular stained glass window. Uh, oh yeah, um, above the door. I like that. We're gonna call it uh, Rose House. Because I think I finally Rose found the page, but we're getting so the stained glass window um, depicts. Uh, I guess it's a rose window. Yeah. Anything else? We we established it has a library, office, basement. Yep. And cornerstones. Probably has a nice big courtyard, a wooden mm -hmm. or a, uh, a stone, a cobblestone uh, courtyard with a uh, statue. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of the Under, founder. Under, underneath the tree, an old gnarled tree. Sure. I'm watching Game of Thrones. It's got, so it's probably white and it's had some weird stuff on it. I'm watching Lord of the Rings, so yeah, it's probably white and it has some weird stuff on it. I just watched the first two episodes yesterday. Huh. I'm so watching good. Taskmaster, so your envelope <laughs> came with a wax seal. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you guys are in the Rose House. You're in the uh, one of the many rooms that feels like it's supposed to be the sitting room. Yeah. And you have uh, Padre Libre has expressed this uh, this mission that you guys need to go on out to Brancombe. Uh, Reginald is standing in the corner, just ready if you guys need anything. It's always, he's always standing in the corner. Yes, yeah, yeah, so do you need I've anything? Here, no, matter, no matter what room you're in, he's standing in the corner. But we're here to serve anything you need, sir. Uh, Billy's uh, leaning on the... Uh, sitting on the billiard table uh, with a pile of books next to him uh, going through them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Can I roll investigation? You can. What uh, what information are you investigating? Um, so in this letter, 
he mentions some things. He mentions the winter in the these summer months, and he mentions attacks. And he specifically mentioned a wolf. Mm -hmm. I had heard of a uh he he's gonna he's gonna butcher the the name, but the the beast of uh Gévaudan in France, something that happened a few centuries ago, this big this big uh big wolf. So if there's anything uh I don't know, I can put together some some similarities between uh mm -hmm. between what's happening up there and what has happened in the in the records of the society that would be helpful. And you're gonna go with an investigation? Yes, if that is acceptable. It is acceptable. And it's just going to be a normal roll right now because you're in a location okay. that stores information and a society that yeah. deals with such information. Yeah. I have two sixes. Two sixes. A double success. What can I do with extra successes? I'm going to look that up right now. Um, so in an investigation, where is it? I mean, you at least get the advantage for that, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so investigation probably wasn't actually the right thing to roll. Probably should have rolled learning. But um, investigation gets me clues. If I roll more successes than required, you get to decide whether I find more clues, understand the context of clues, or simply enjoy the satisf satisfaction <laughs> of a job well done. So you definitely do feel like you've contributed already before setting out, you know, having been here's contribution. Yeah. And you've proven that by, uh, by doing this, this investigation, there is, um, no rumors or myths circulating around any, um, similar creatures to a wolf or the, the creature, uh, from France out in okay. the, the, the west of England, which is where Brancom is. The so, weather? The weather. So it is summer. It's June, as the, yeah. the letter indicated, but that there is um, mention of frost and things freezing, uh, very late frost. And that certainly, at this stage of the investigation, is a clear sign of something supernatural going on. Uh, while the farmers may not agree with you, um, it's obvious. I mean, you are the society. I, I don't know yeah. how weak an extra clue that is, but it is obvious that there's something supernatural afoot. With the second success, um, could I maybe know like almost a category of creature mm -hmm. that... Uh, mm -hmm. That could that could affect the weather in that way. Yeah, there's um, you know it to be in the the troll folk family. Uh, okay, Longby mentions this in the letter as well, and so it kind of sticks for you that hags, okay. witches, and troll folk were things that had previously been discussed that he thinks yeah. are there. But but Longby isn't somebody who is a member of the society. Um, yeah doesn't have the site and so yeah he's explaining right. that away as best he can well padre it seems like uh longby's maybe on to something with the his mention of hags and witches and trolls that would might explain some of the weather here don't think there's anything uh to this this wolf theory of his mm. uh i've found some references to uh black shuck but that's east east anglia it's not it's not mm. out west so uh, I'd say we're probably looking at something troll-like. Oh, troll-like, huh? Uh, you got anything in those books over there? Well, I was looking at, I was thinking about looking under for stuff about this curse. You know, I have a small uh, background in medicine. 
you know, with this curse going around and, you know, with this fierce murder, uh, makes me wonder, you know, if some creature is causing this. So I wonder if there's something specific in this town's history that you might be able to look at. Well, that's a good idea. Uh, every town has a history. It's up to us to investigate it. Indeed. And you can have a normal learning role for some town normal history. Normal learning role. All right, that is learning plus logic. So that is, I have a three in logic. Excuse me, I'm bumping my mic. And two in learning. Looking for sixes. Mm -hmm. Ah, these people are really, really, uh, you know, they don't have a lot of good history, it seems like. I have zero successes. You can push it if you want and take a condition. I'll take a condition and push it. it. And I think that lets you re-roll. Are you cool with that? That sounds good to me. I'll take a condition. Ah, it's, it's so frustrating. It's making me angry. I assume it's a mental condition. It is. All right. Ah, that's much better. I was starting to get, you know, frightened, but uh, with two successes in my, in 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 this uh, learning, right? Yeah, that's what we're learning. So you have two successes now. Yep, two successes. And the condition. You can use learning to, let's see, obtain basic information about a VASIN if the game mastery deems it appropriate. By rolling more successes than required, you can sometimes gain access to more information. Uh, rituals, magic, occult things, mechanical devices. Yeah. Um, How best to behave in certain situations when so that apply to possible creatures? And stuff like that. Were you looking for like history? Yeah, so yeah. You, you get a little bit more of the like maps and anything. Like, interestingly enough, Brancom is rather obscure. It's a tiny village out in uh, West England, and it's not known for much more than shepherds and and farming out that way. Uh, but you do find a reference uh, to some kind of legend that's hinted at. And I'm going to get the name right here, so bear with me for half a second. But there's a, a, a legend about uh, an old standing stone that's out there that is said to have been a witch that was vanquished by Saint... By a saint back oh maybe a thousand years ago a witch vanquished by a saint indeed I'm making a note oh, hmm. dealing with witches can be tricky well, if we're dealing with a witch, are there any protections that we can have going forward? Reginald, any ideas? Mm. I haven't seen a witch in a long time. Those are such old stories. Uh, I can't seem to remember any saints traveling out that way or what their name might be. Do we have any protection against witchcraft in the witchery? Protection against witchery. I'm going southern. Anything you need, sir. All right. Um, hmm. I, I do remember that the legends of the past do point to the, the witches who would be turned to standing stones being specifically dealt with by... Uh, priests or saints or, or missionaries. This was, uh, whichever the saint was likely out there, he would have 
been out there to uh, convert the pagans of, of what was it? Uh, Mercia? The uh, old yes. kingdoms, the old Saxon kingdoms out there. Well, it's a good thing we got the Padre here. Indeed. I've been on a mission a time or two, so conversion uh, can be tricky, but it's always beneficial. Well, I don't think you're going to convert any, uh, any creatures. Well, witches. maybe we can send them to the depths that they need to, or return them, or have them understand that, uh, you know, the suppression of the peoples isn't the best. It's really the worst. Maybe we can get a saint's pinky that might help us with protection or something. Some kind of phalange. <laughs> yes, a digit. Uh, can we get... Um... <laughs> Is there a, a, does, does the society here have anything like, uh, in case of witches, take this bag. Yeah. Break glass in case <laughs> of witches. <laughs> Uh-huh. That's what I was hoping for. Is this what we're trying to establish as the advantage later? Um possibly. Yeah. I was just about to go look through advantage ideas here. Um So each society house um does have a lack of a better term a, like a ritual room. Uh, that you prepare yourselves in r right before heading out on your journey. And <clears throat> there would definitely be some, uh, like, a, like a bowl of holy water and uh, maybe a crucifix or two that you could take with you. They probably have a, a, a rosary as well, things along those lines. Billy, do you have a rosary with you and some holy water? Nah, I don't believe in that sort of thing, but... Huh. Well, I didn't say you were the smartest. I just said you were great. After all the things we've seen, my friend. If having... you must, you can bless my gun. Oh, I will always bless your firearm. That's my advantage. Okay. Uh, and that is, I like that because I can give the, I can give that blood. Yeah. I have that blessing under a talent also. Oh, so. you do. What is that? Uh, I think uh, that you can just bless things. Yeah. Oh. I can bless, I can live actually just bless things to see. Okay. So that's not even my advantage. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, I, I think that it's an advantage to, to have that um, because it takes time. I mean, it's like five minutes, but it's like, well, we could do it on the way there. Yeah. yeah, page 52, uh, once per session, you can bless an object or another an object or another player character. The player character or anyone using the objects gains the blessed advantage, adding plus two to the test of their choice. The advantage expires upon use or when the mystery is over. You can only bless the same character or object once per mystery. Um, and when it comes to firearms, uh, ammo is what gets blessed. Oh, uh, oh, so can we get, um, can we pull out the vial that has the, uh, the ammo in the holy water? Are we using, I assume it's cap and ball still. This is, is no, this is late 1800s. Must be, this is I bullets. think cartridge. Yeah. Cartridge. Okay. Yeah. Revolver yeah, style. Six shooter. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so you I get like that. You have six blessed bullets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you spent some time just cleaning, maintaining, mm -hmm. uh, making sure it's, you know, practicing in the mirror. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Remember, you are not the devil. You're just killing the devil. Sometimes you have to be the devil to kill the devil. I mean, it's fine. It's great. It's best. Okay, so we got an advantage with he's got holy bullets. 
do we what, want? What do you want to do for your advantage? Do we want something medicinal? Got an attack, and then we get a defense. Is there like a? There, the advantage ideas are very, very vague, which yeah. is nice. So, um, you could save want... it. You could save it for like somebody in town likes you, something like oh, that. Oh, cool! I like that. Yeah, we can do that. Okay. While we're doing stuff, Reginald uh, acquires a uh, horse and carriage for us, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, so this will take you to the uh, train station. Uh, the carriage is ready for you. Thank you, Reginald. Thank you, Reginald. Of course, of course so. Um, we live but to serve. Do I need a weapon? Do you have a weapon? I use my Bible, my old Bible as a weapon. <laughs> uh I mean, yeah. Okay. Good. You can you can Bible thump somebody. That's that's what I want to do. That that's his weapon. I think it's got a I think it's like iron bound. It's like an heavy. iron bound one. Okay, hold on. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, like, like you a... know, with like the reinforced corners, you know, that you know what that's what I mean. And uh I think I keep it on like a little chain. Okay. It's old. Iron, an iron Bible. Got it. Okay. I'll uh, take it. I'll take it. That's all right. Let's see. Let's see, I got brand new utensils. I got fine communion wine uh, and an old Bible. Oh, and, uh, oh, yeah. All right. So we're going to head across town to the train station. Mm hmm. So the journey to Brancombe, uh, starting in London involves taking a train to Bristol. And from there, you'll jump on another train to Gloucester or toward Gloucester. Gloucester. But it will have a small, it'll be stopping in a small town called Annansbury. And that is where you are to meet uh, Longby at that train station. He has uh, arranged another uh, private coach for the three of you to take to his home in Brinkham up the road. Okay. The, uh, uh, as, go ahead. Yeah. Nothing. Go, go for it. <laughs> as the, the track winds upwards toward Brinkham through the wooded hills, uh, this is your chance to have about a half hour talk with Longby. Um, if you will, if you wish, and I can just read off some facts or we can, I can do my best to sound like Sam sounding like Longby. I would like I would to hear that. I'd, I would really like to hear that. Yes. We will all have a good uh, laugh at that. I feel like, uh, Padre, our Padre would lead the mm. conversation here since, uh, he knew this guy mm. prior to coming yeah. here. Uh, you're my old friend. I, I'm Romanian now, and I don't think I can get out of it. It's been forever. It's good to see you. You look great. A little bit pudgy like me, but, you know, great all the same. It's the, it's the years, yes. Oh, the food looks good on you. It's good. Thank you. Thank you uh, so much for coming. I do greatly appreciate it. As I said, it's, my... it's been most peculiar out here. I do hope you have some insights uh, with your your traveling companion. Yes, this is Billy, Billy Har the Billy Harkness. He is he is a fabulous man. Oh, Billy, it's nice to meet you. You can call me Edgar. Edgar, it's nice to meet you as well. If you if you come this way, I've uh, uh, acquired a, a coach for us to to head to uh, my home. And he'll load into the coach, and you guys will mm. start the the winding road mm. up to Brinkham. Brinkham. So has anything changed yeah. since you sent that letter? Mm. I dare say that the 
situation has deteriorated some. The the constables believe that they have the culprit. Uh, it was a young Daisy Thomas who was found dead uh, up the, the hill. I'll, I'll point it out to you when we get closer. But uh, they believe that uh, Billy Wincombe is the murderer. He's been uh, been arrested. And you don't think so? It's difficult to say. Um, three days before Daisy's body was found, uh, she was seen uh, running from the Annensbury May Fair uh, in visible distress uh, because Billy, her beau, was in the company of another local girl. So the the constables believe it's premeditated murder, that they'd had some kind of falling out. Uh, but everybody in, in Brancombe who knew Billy doesn't think him capable of such violence. You got and, a name for this other girl? I, I'm afraid I haven't met her. Uh, the, the locals Small in town. town like this? She was, met her? she was from out of town. Is my understanding. Get many out of towners? Not many. Uh, and I, I hadn't had the 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 pleasure of meeting the young lady or, or really knowing the knowing Billy all that well. Uh, but most of the villagers are, are pretty distressed by uh by Billy's arrest. They don't think him again capable and when Daisy's body was, was found, it was mauled as if by a, a wild animal. M most folks in Brancombe, I think, believe the same as I do, that some kind of wild creature, uh, like a wolf, as I said in my letter, though none have been seen. Um, you don't get many of them around here. Yeah. But is Billy used to raising wolves or dogs or something? Uh, well, Billy had a, a little bit of... Uh, had, had a, he was young... And had a try not to go southern. Uh, he it's had so hard. <laughs> he had a, he had a little flock of sheep. His father had given him. Uh, it, by all accounts, Billy and Daisy were going to get married once he uh, was able to sell those uh, sell that flock off. But uh, on top of that, uh, everyone's been distressed because the, there's been a few other uh, deaths they not of people but of the the local sheep population uh i think the thomas's farm uh daisy's father uh, suffered a, a a loss of one of theirs and uh no creature has been found so this is gonna get confusing because now we've got we've got two billies um but, oh that's uh, true i didn't even make Billy that connection pulls out. Uh, one of his one of his items that he just comes with is uh, is a a book of maps. So he's gonna mm -hmm. uh, flip through and pull out a, a map of the area and ask uh, ask for locations of of maybe where where the uh, livestock killings were, where the uh, where Daisy was found, mm. um, and the location where the uh, Mayfair was trying to put together a pattern and possibly if they know where the witch was defeated standing stone you mean the standing stone yes the standing stone <laughs> these are all great things um they do require some rolls cool we like rolling what yeah. sort of roll Let's um let's put Is things that were elsewhere shooter? are now here. The the map and the location specifically is one. Let me see what the book states as the the difficulty on that one. If it doesn't it says most rolls are going to be just normal yeah. and success. Uh, I think uh, I think it's a normal uh, investigation, specifically. 
How about okay? Yeah, I could do that. Um, what's your Padre? Padre you want to help? I uh, absolutely. Uh, what is your what's what your main rolling? skill? Yeah, I'm I'm rolling six dice. All right, I I roll eight for investigation. Uh, investigation. No, never mind. I was looking at inspiration. Inspiration. Oh, oh, I'd love to help you if but, you want uh, learning. Yeah, no, Mark, it's in here. As you can do learning no. as well. No thanks. And either way, you get two great. bonus points because you've asked Long B for help with this information. Okay. And this is something okay. he's been tracking. So plus two for Long B and plus one for the Padre. Mm -hmm. One, two. That's a that's that's a lot of dice. Uh, anything else? Okay. What dice does Vason use? Was asked in our Discord oh. chat. D six. You roll one for uh, you 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 add, take your attributes, which are between one and five, I think, mm -hmm. and. One what? Five, yeah. yeah. And right. and then your skills, which you're gonna mostly be ones and twos and zeros. Add those two things together, get extra dice for certain items, um, and uh help skills or talents. That is two successes. Excellent. All right, and you rolled investigation for additional I clues. Did investigation. Okay. Yeah. Well, your first reward we're going to drop in the Discord. So anybody who's watching this on YouTube later, just be here live on Discord and you can see these things. If I can find Discord. Yeah, you're hunting for successes when you're rolling uh, uh, sixes for successes. All right. Uh, so you're aware, AJ. Yes, since you have a condition, the uh, the attributes I think, mm -hmm. yeah, is one one fewer die per condition. Okay, so that's yours is mental, so you're going to get one fewer die on logic and empathy checks. Right. Uh, I, I don't remember how to heal conditions. Uh, you Thanks. do that with inspiration, if I remember right. Okay. Look. By meditating. All right, so I got a map. You got a map. There is now a map of the area in our Discord live play. South Gloucestershire. Brancombe and Annensbury. West Nibley. Great names. Okay, so mm -hmm. what can... So Longby points to the yeah. um, area of your first question, which is where the standing yeah. stone and the murder took place. And you see it yeah. up in the northeast of that map called Old Meg's Holt or Meg's cool. Mound. Okay. And then the um, unfortunate woman who died was Daisy Thomas. Mm -hmm. And you can see yeah. the Thomas farm is not uh is a little bit to the the west there down the hill okay so she was found on her farm no she was found at the at old meg's holt okay yeah yeah so okay she's found up there she's from that that that's her family farm there see. and see. that was um a few days later that they lost a sheep as well to the same okay. creature presumably the same creature that well, it, same, it same mutilation, same looking of having been mm, eaten. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, additional farms have... Uh, have the uh, Winch, Winchcombe? Winchcombe? Uh, anyway, down towards the 
just straight west okay. from there. Yeah. Also, oh. and that's where that's far away. Uh, Billy Wynn comes from. Okay. Okay, so there were only uh, livestock deaths at the Thomas Farm and the Wincombe Farm. The there's a few other family farms spread out from there, okay. and there's been a handful of um, sheep there. It's kind of taking kind of a, a west-ish route. Okay, interesting. Um, uh, Long B and... says it's been a little sporadic. You know, it's been a little here and there, and so it hasn't. I see. Given us a. Mm -hmm. And I assume as we're going, we're getting a. Uh, a view of of the landscape around us. What what what's it sort of look like around? Here? So yeah, Annensbury is kind of down in is nestled amongst a basically a big rolling hill, starting from Meg's Mound there, and it kind of comes downhill mm. past those farms and kind of a, a spiral itself. Would you say Meg's Mount? is the highest of of it of the area looking and does it and it looks over the brancombe uh, it yeah you can see it as you're about to enter into the village of brancombe longby points it out to you up there it's it's you're coming from ansbury so you're looking out the right oh, yeah. window of the carriage and he points yeah. up there and says that's meg's mound uh and as we go he had been talking about the the change in the weather is that noticeable to us now uh, it's it's been odd. It's not we're not feeling that right now. It's just okay. some evenings have seen an unusual frost to them. Interesting. All right. Well, Padre, you got any other questions? Is the frost located just around the kills, or is it widespread? Hmm. I haven't done much investigating on the frost on my side, I'm afraid. Uh, we might need to uh, visit some of the farms and see. Uh, I've only heard the rumors of the frost uh, around Daisy in particular was the last uh, place I had visited up there. And some of the, the foliage had seen a, a frost around it. But Okay. Well, I think we should gather some go and sh should we gather? That's not that's not the right accent. Should we go gather the people or should we go to the people? I think we go house to house. Well, surely you all are you all. Yeah. Uh surely you you're tired from a day of of journeying uh as you are pulling up to the the vicarage. It's a boxy two-story building with whitewashed walls and a slate roof and it's got uh, a lower floor that's longby's office and library uh he as he ushers you guys in from the carriage he's pointing out on the maps um that he has where the information he had given you earlier was the fact that you were tracking both of them you now have kind of a matching uh set of maps of some of the things that had gone on and then there's two rooms prepared for you upstairs uh, of the four. And there's a kitchen and scullery, that kind of thing. And an outhouse as well, if you need, you know, the facilities. Um, but Longby's suggestion to you is that uh, we can head out to any of the farms uh, in the morning, if you wish. Uh, probably best to rest and recuperate after a day's worth of travel. Where is his place on the map? On the map. I think I have another map for you. I can look for it. Because um, you are now in the town of Brinkham. And so... Yeah, okay. Um, I think the one I sent you is of the whole area. Let me see if I've got one that has the, the village in it. Uh, but basically, you can tell on that small map that there's a kind of... It's a tiny uh, one road in from Annensbury and then it splits out at that T the the vicarage is is about right there okay. um well all right I think I think tonight we should uh make our plan 
tomorrow we execute. Uh, I don't know how you feel about walking Padre, but we could probably uh, make our way to these farms within an hour or two, maybe less. Yes, as a shepherd of the looking, people. Looking you up and down. Uh, yes, maybe, a little square-bodied. Uh, I could use a, couple, a little bit of walking, you know. At the mission, there was only, you know, so much room. But here, I, I could use a frolic in the heels. Plus, we get to see the sheep one-on-one. -on -one. And when I may say sheep, I mean the people. <laughs> There's uh, definitely I... more sheep out here than there are people, I will say. Yes, that I that, that seems to be true. Um, Andrew, can I roll an insp Can you can I inspire myself, or to heal my conditions so I am not an angry preacher? I don't believe that you can. And inspiration okay. requires a conversation with at least one other person. And to heal a mental condition, it will take you the day. Oh. Okay. But you could spend even tomorrow. It's it's late evening now from all your travel. You could spend tomorrow uh, making some preparations, have a scene for an inspiration, and heal that condition, and then on the next day, head out if you wish. No, I I I could be an angry peach. It's not. It's fine. It's fine. I get tired of walking. I get tired of people. Messing with I'm tired of creatures messing with people, or people messing with creatures that mess with people. Yeah. Well, let's you and me come up with our plan. Let's uh, let's figure out what we are gonna do tomorrow. That's so uh, we put out the the maps that I've got uh, in my book. I think it's just like loose sheets. Mm -hmm. um, spread them out on whatever whatever tables available. I assume uh, Longby's given given us some space in the office that we can use. It's a it's a cluttered mess in Longby's yeah. library, but his whole vicarage is a uh, is at your disposal. Okay. Um, just taking a quick look. Is there can anything you... in here that might be of use to us? Any any histories, more local information that we would not have been able to find at the society headquarters. Yes. Uh, there's definitely more town history kept in this uh, vicarage than there is going to be anywhere else. Uh, it's a rather yeah. unassuming small town, um, but this would be the place to be, be looking for local legends and um, history and things along those lines. Uh I know it's your uh, area of uh, expertise, Padre. Mm -hmm. You want to see if you can find something about that saint? Yes. Uh, you know, it. suppose we should go down to... Uh... I was just looking at the map, and I just forgot what it was called. Uh, I assume the Shepherd's Rest would be a place where we can get uh, some wine or some ale and, and uh, talk to the people. Well, like long be said, they uh, they don't get many visitors around here, so we should uh, be wary. Oh. I, 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 I right. hate to tell you, gentlemen, I, I need a little rest myself um, from the long day. I would be happy mm -hmm. to take you down to the Shepherd's Rest and give you introductions to the town folk, but uh, I think that should wait till tomorrow. Uh, pe pre please feel free to avail yourself of the library. Uh, any of the books that we have in here, or the, any of this is open to you. Um, but uh, if you will allow me, I'll, I'm going to retire for the evening. Very well, old friend. Sleep well. Don't forget your prayers. We may need them. Of course. Of course, Padre. Um, let's see. As I'm looking over the skills, I really like the descriptions and the way that the mechanics that they have on this. Um, since he's got a local library and whatever, can I use observation as we were coming into town? Um, 
Mm. Let's see. No, this one's going to be in the... I think it's specifically only an investigation check if you want to be looking okay. for uh, through the books that Longby has. Because uh, cause finding things in this uh, cluttered mess, it's actually a challenging role. Uh, being learned, would it be able to... Okay, you said investigation. I would think learning would help know where to scrounge for the specific um, a specific book. But so I this, will rule. this the description yeah. of Longby's library is it's an extensive library which contains some useful information. Mm-hmm. However, it is not well organized. Well, for anyone except for Longby. Yeah. And so it has I... the air of personal organization to it. Edgar, whatever it was, good for, you know, organization, obviously. Uh, he'll pull out some brand new utensils and start trying to figure out what's what and see if he can't uh, roll so... So you're going to need so, two successes uh, have... on this one. Oof. You check that side of the room, I'll check this side of the room. All right. So do I get no, one for you doing it? Me. Yeah. All right. Double twos. Oh, he's an organized mess. This is chaos. My spirit is hovering over all this chaos and wanting to put it in order. <laughs> Do you want another condition? Oh, I don't want to be scared. I don't need to be frightened. No, I have. I'm rolling two dice. I. Uh... Uh... Suppose I'll. I'll take a condition and, and try this again. I okay. mean, this is, this is not a not a very good roll. Uh, it's a hard roll. Nope, did not. Did not do it. Well, this is frustrating. I sit down and put my feet up. And uh, help me drink some of this wine. Maybe it'll calm my nerves. And your nerves. Uh, uh, hey. My nerves are fine. All right, Padre. Just uh, relax. Let's make our plan for tomorrow. Okay. Everything around here is pretty much within walking distance. Thankfully. Um, everything is literally within walking distance. If you look at the meters at the bottom, a mm-hmm. kilometer is like a 15-minute walk for a normal oh, yeah. person-ish. So... We can get pretty much anywhere out here within a 30, 45 minutes. But look at that uh, elevation change. Oh, man. <laughs> we will be huffing and puffing and like a choo-choo train. Yeah, well, luckily, uh, elevation only goes up in one direction. So it'll be easy coming back down. Yeah, well, we have 30 mountains to climb. Okay, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. I'd I'd like to speak with Billy if the constable will let us in there. Oh, I think that's super hear, wise. Hear his side of the story. Yes, that's good. Good thinking. Start with Billy. Start with the const- then the constable or the constable, then Billy. Uh, I'm very suspicious of this mysterious girl considering they don't have... I mean, look at the size of this town. You saw how big it was when we came in. And they don't have uh, outsiders come in very often, so if we could get a description, that might be helpful. Yeah, so we get, uh, yeah, so we start with Constable. Uh, am I right? Uh, Edgar is the priest of the town? Mm hmm. Okay. Of Brancombe. The yeah. uh, town that Billy. Is being held in is uh, where you came from, Annsbury. Annsbury. Okay. That'll be an even easier walk because there's a road. It is a half hour carriage ride. That's what I know. That seems inaccurate. Okay. But you just took a half hour carriage ride here. Yeah. Well, Any of this so stuff about we're... witches and hags uh, say anything about time dilation? <laughs> Well, 
you know, you don't want to go, you know, hya hya all the time with your carriage and wrecks the undercarriage of it, you know, and then you have people having to fix it and you have to lift it off things and uh, then you break down. You go slow, and you don't get the bumpy bumpies, right? Right. I can't imagine the carriage would go much faster than walking. It's just you didn't have to walk it. And it carries more, yeah. Uh, so you want to go to talk to the constable in Ansbury? Or both? Yeah. yeah. Um, so in the morning, we'll go to Ansbury. I'm I'm actually not all that interested in talking to the const- constable. I think Billy's uh, reckoning of events is going to be a bit more uh, accurate than uh, anybody who's accusing him of crime, especially if he says he didn't commit it. Yeah, uh, we'll talk to, you know, the constable and see what his, you know, if he's seeing all these creatures, all these animals and people getting torn up, if they're all the same, see if we can get an idea of uh, what sort of chupacabras, you know, ripping things up. So that it's a chupacabra. I know. I Still, we're still looking for that chupacabra. Hopefully, he didn't Pretty follow sure us. That was just a dog, but anyway, yeah, uh, it's not. It's much bigger than any chihuahua or dingo or whatever we see out there. It had fangs. We want to head up to uh, head up to the Stain and Stone tomorrow. Or we want to speak with the townsfolk first. Head down to the Shepherd's Rest. I think go. Uh, I think you're right. I think going down to Shepherd's Rest, or the you know, seeing maybe Shepherd's Rest for breakfast, then, then speak with Billy. I like that. Maybe bring a pastry to the uh, constable. Maybe it'll get him on a on a good side. I keep hearing people, uh, what is it, bubble and squeak. Uh, excuse uh, me. <laughs> I'm I'm curious. I don't know what it is. Bubble and squeak. Oh, yeah. Well, I heard these people are pretty normal. They have, I heard they sometimes put beans with their breakfast. You know, that's pretty normal. Well, I don't think we're going to find anything in this library tonight. I say we tuck in. Yes, I'm about fed up with this place. I need to go to bed. Yeah, we need to talk to, uh, talk to your friend about keeping better records, keeping things organized. Oh, don't let the, you know, yeah. The abbot come by, see all this mess. Oh, he'd be in, he'd be in trouble. Get his nails, you know, fingers wrapped. So, okay. Uh, a blessing to you. I go to bed. You go to bed. Uh, if you hear anything, you know, bump in the night, you know, wake me up. And I do likewise, per usual. Sure thing. Standard Did he society. Tell us where we could. Uh... Yeah, he showed you the, the. It's just a small staircase up, and there's four rooms off to it. He pointed out his is the one to the right, and all of the rest of them are to the left of the landing. Okay. Yeah, Billy uh, goes into the the room that was designated his and lays down on top of the covers, just taking the boots off, uh, hat down over his face. So even though it's summer, you know, the northern elevation reaches night a little early mm-hmm. or how it feels. And you have a disquieted uh, sleep. It's uncomfortable. And there's something about this town that just doesn't sit quite right. Uh, but nothing goes bump in the night. Nothing along those lines. And you wake up in the morning and you smell um, a decent uh, breakfast being cooked from the kitchen. Dang, I I suppose we should have, you know, ran our plans by him first. Oh, well. Yeah, Billy gets up and heads down to the kitchen, uh, shaking his head at the horribly organized library on his way there. (laughs) In the kitchen, you find uh, Mary Hopper. She's a stout, bustling 
woman of nearly 50 years, and she's the one who does for the, the curate here, for Edgar. She's the one making breakfast and uh, has a few things ready for you guys. Gives you a little bit of a side eye, though, as you come in and sit down. Or assuming uh, you sit down. As you come in, you can sit down. Yeah. Uh, I had something I was going to say, but I don't remember what it was. Sorry. Uh, good morning. Uh, we uh, thank you for your hospitality. Huh? Pay no mind. Pay no mind. That's what I do. Howdy, ma'am. I... Gotta say, you were not the person I was expecting to see down here this morning. Name's Billy. Billy Harkness. Well, Billy, it's nice to meet you. I'm Mrs. Harper. Well, Mrs. Harper, that uh, whatever it is you're cooking smells mighty fine. Well. Don't suppose you have enough for two more. Oh, well, yeah, I, I have it ready. I was the, I'm the one who does for <laughs> Edgar here. Uh, I'm the uh, set like the rooms Edgar up for you. They probably... find yeah, yeah. Rooms were, were were just right. It sure seems like Edgar wouldn't would not have this place under control without someone like you. <laughs> I dare say not. So it'll all be ready here in just a moment. Please make yourself comfortable. So I'll serve you some breakfast. There is no like, what is? I guess. Charm would be empathy, uh -huh. uh, manipulation. Uh huh. Yeah, you found the uh, the bolded word next to her name of what she needs. Yeah. Uh, is is Padre being charming in any oh, sort of way? Uh, yeah, he will. Uh, yeah, he he will. <sighs> When he's not talking just with you or with, you know, he will put on a more, he'll, he'll put more emphasis on the Padre role than the, than most other times. And so he will use a little more eloquence with his, uh, blessings and, and, uh, bless yous and all the things that are normal. And to be heard by, you know, expected from Padres, where normally he talks like a normal person and uh, is not too pushy. Uh, but he will say uh, a lofty little prayer and a blessing over the food and over Miss Harper and over the house and uh, uh, many thanks to the Lord and Savior. Is uh, manipulation one of your things? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yes, I have a Juan in it. You have and one in manipulation. Empathy. Yes. Oh yeah. But that's uh, empathy, so that's uh, I roll six dice on it. Minus one because of your condition. Minus Plus one because because you're doing all your blessings me. angrily. That's right. <laughs> uh. Yeah. So, two, four. That's two. No, one. One. I have a shine on that. One for manipulation. I think she rolls now, too. Because I think it's a contested roll. You have, oh, to do, yeah. you have to do better than her. Now she's rolling a lot less dice. Unless I've got that wrong. I haven't rolled the dice yet in case I'm wrong, but that's what we're going to go with. And you still succeed. So she warms to you a little bit. Excellent. Because hopefully, you know, you get in good with her, then it'll be good with everybody. Mm hmm. Oh, dearie me. Uh. Oh, dear me. Oh, these breakfasts are so good. You know, with all these different types of sausages and, and eggs. And, uh, 
and beans. I still don't, yeah, I like these beans. They're a little bit sweet, but, you know, where I come from, we don't always have, you know, sweet beans. What do you think, Billy, on these sweet beans? I'm pretty used to beans. These are <laughs> damn fine beans, as far as beans go. Now, now you didn't hear it from me, mind you, but I, I dare say that the uh, the, the Mister Longby, he, he orders these in special. A can or two came in with the the cart yesterday. Uh, he, I, I don't know what region they come from, but he has an affinity for these beans. These are nope, go southern. These are mighty fine beans. <laughs> nope. Uh, these beans are lovely, and your preparation of all this is so good. Um, oh, thank you. I don't mind telling you that. I don't mind telling you. <clears throat> <laughs> I don't mind uh, telling y'all. Yeah. I don't mind telling y'all. We're all just heading to south. South. <laughs> anyway. It's at it. Whatever this town is called, because I cannot remember the name of it, it is in the south, somewhere in the vast south of the United <laughs> States of America. <laughs> uh, so, I have some information from Brandcomb for you guys. I think most of this is conveyed in a slightly different way, with definitely an English accent from Mrs. Harper, but I'm going to just <laughs> read you a little bit of information that you should have now. Um. She basically conveys to you guys that uh, mystery surrounds this village. They're very uh, concerned about foreigners uh, coming in at the moment. And that uh, basically she feels that Brancombe is a village under siege. Even if the enemy is unknown and unseen, we don't know what's killing the sheep and, uh, and poor Daisy. Poor Daisy. Everyone around the village is braced for more killings, but no one knows when or where they might take place. When they do, people, people speculate about where the killer might strike next or whether it's a wild animal or something more frightening. It is the uncertainty more than anything that wears on everyone's nerves around here. You can see it in the faces and hear it in their voices. You can, uh, there is no talk of anything else in the village. And raised voices turn to blows all too easily, especially at the shepherd's rest. There's also bitterness and a sense of betrayal. With Billy Wincombe arrested, the police are taking no further interest in the matter, even though everyone but Daisy's family admits that the evidence against Billy is flimsy. Are these fresh killings the work of the same hand? If so, that suggests that Billy is innocent. But Annensbury seems like another world, and the police there dismiss all the people of Brancombe as ignorant yokels. Meanwhile, everyone waits. Where will the next killing be, and when? What is causing the strange blight of the crops nearby? And how long will it be before another human life is lost? What was this person's name again? The person speaking to you currently is Mary Hopper, Mrs. Hopper. Mrs. Hopper, do you think Billy did it? Hmm. Well, now you didn't hear it from me, mind you, but uh, Billy and Daisy were a devoted couple. I can't see Billy doing anything along those lines. Now, the two of us heard about a mysterious girl. Do you have any insight into who that might be, where we might be able to find someone that uh, showed up on the day of the Mayfair and vanished quickly after that? Oh, you're talking mm -hmm. about Ginny Pierce. Ginny I have Pierce. no idea why Billy went with Ginny Pierce to the Mayfair. It's rumored. Now, you didn't hear it from me, mind you. It's rumored that Daisy and Billy had a falling out. But... It's what we heard. It was also rumored that uh, Billy was going to ask for Daisy's hand to, for marriage at the end of the spring. He had just gotten a flock of sheep from his father. But 
And now you didn't hear it from me, but but Ginny Pierce isn't from around here. She's not, and and she left after the fair. I'm not sure where, where is she from. Do you know? No, I can't say that I do. Padre, something's ringing a bit of a bell for me, and I think maybe we need to talk things through as we uh, continue our investigation. Miss like Hopper, can you be a Jezebel in the mix? Now nah, I went Southern. <laughs> uh, Bless her heart, there's Jezebel in the mix. Miss Hopper, can you uh, point, us to point, point us toward the nearest field that seems black? Oh, I think the the latest is the the Wincombe Farm. It's uh, it's just outside of town, up the hill. Mm -hmm. I've got it on my map. Yeah, well, that big hill over there. I think we got a long day ahead of us. Yes, I better stop eating with all this, you know, delicious breakfast if I'm going to be. Going up that big, big hill. Now, I don't mean to be nosy. Uh, heaven knows I'm not a gossip or a busybody of any kind. But uh, I, I would no, say that uh, most folks around here aren't really that particularly interested in visitors right now, even with everything going on. Um, you may have more success getting to know folks uh, down at the Shepherd's Rest before uh, heading out to their farm. Uh, well, you think a farmer like uh, I'm sorry, Billy's uh, parents David happen to know their names the Wilcoms David. you think a farmer like David Wilcoms going to be at the traveler or the shepherd's rest rather than work in his farm today well, I imagine he's, he's going to do his chores and everything take care of the farm but yeah, everybody comes into the shepherd's rest uh, when they're done for the day. Suppose we are to no. Uh I suppose we should go over to uh go see if we can talk with Billy before we go to the Shepherd's Rest then, huh? Give all these wonderful town folk a chance to get their chores done. Suppose you're right, Padre. Um, Miss Opry, would you mind just it'd be ever so nice if you could uh pack us up something for the road. Oh, sure, sure. No problem, no problem. Oh, that would be so delightful. Thank you. She where packs you a little be bread to... and fruit. Some cheese. Where might we be able to uh, hop the nearest carriage to uh, Annensbury? Oh. Well, there hasn't been a carriage around here for some time. Now, you didn't hear from me, but I think that if that was the old falling out from uh, down the street, there was a carriage driver for quite a while. <laughs> he's kind of, he's sweet. But uh, he, yeah, he, uh, he moved away to Annsbury, and then, and then my son Billy, no, Bobby, Bobby, I'm going to get these names right. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. we, we have too many Billies. Yeah, he's down... He moved to to London of all places. He used to run the carriage too. I I think that uh, I think you have to arrange a carriage for Mansbury. Well, all right then. Suppose we're huffing it. Oh yes, let uh, let us hop on down the road like the Canejos of old. Oh, the Canaris. Oh, like, like the Canaras <laughs> of old. Yeah, uh, I can't help but the vampire accent. Look, we're gonna look. head out, I guess. Okay. Um, are we? Do you want to go see if we can talk to Billy? Do we want to have a a day of inspirational chats so that we can heal our conditions? And not be so angry all the time. Because I, I assume if it takes that long on a, in a carriage, it's going to take us much longer than the 15 minutes 
to get there walking. Well, especially after that big breakfast. There it is again. <laughs> yes, after that. <laughs> uh, conditions, healing conditions. Uh... Page 71. Thank you. Yes. I think it's 71. Okay. Uh, medical care, healing conditions. It's in the chart. Yep. So I have here in the little cheat sheet for medical conditions, heal mental conditions, Perfect. takes a day, use inspiration in a safe space while having a close dialogue to heal three conditions per success for someone else, including broken. Okay. So we each get to try to inspire each other? That's when I feel. Sorry, Padre, you're going to keep those conditions. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. Um, so I uh, think I I think the road is a a safe enough space as as especially as we're heading uh, southeast away from this like blighted village, right? I disagree. I think that the, you don't think the road is a safe place. I don't. I think that the the vicarage is your base of operations. That's the safe space in town. You'd have to stay there for a day. Which you can do. As boring as that might be, we can't combine well, the two. Like, the problem with that is that it's impossible for us to actually get any information out of that place because it's a mess. And I think we got pretty much everything we can get out of both uh, Hopper and uh, the Vicar mm -hmm. guy. Yeah. Um, I, I'm agreeing with you. I think that the yeah. the the consequence of healing the condition is the sacrifice of gaining more information. I don't think you can do both at the same time. Yeah, and so you would dedicate your day to healing that condition. I'll have a conversation, then roll inspiration and see where it's at, and then you could head down to Annensbury the the next day, so to speak. Okay, maybe we'll do it tomorrow. I think we should want the, the other time yeah. today. Yeah, let's totally push our conditions. Let's yeah. Let's break this game. Let's see what it's yeah. worth. Well, I mean, <laughs> we, could have, we could have each have two more conditions, and we could heal oh. them all with yeah. the, with oh. the one day. Talk, exactly. So yeah, uh, we just can yeah, spend the day idea. angry and frustrated, which I feel is accurately describes the player's situation of me not letting the road be a safe space. Uh huh. That's fine. <laughs> uh, so we are. Walking, you're walking. Um, I can't believe they had a falling out. You had, why wouldn't you want to have a you know a carriage service? I don't uh, think that information is particularly relevant to our current situation. Uh, I think it is since I have to walk all the way back to town. Why can't we just take a carriage and it would have been there in no time? That's what I'm saying, especially uh, after you the know. big breakfast. These I'd people that we, like to walk after they eat, nah. It it's good we're we're working that breakfast off. I think uh, as we're walking, can we see that distant hill with the standing stone? Mm hmm. Oh, you can't can see, see the, the stone stone on top. You can't see no? the standing okay. stone from uh, from there, but you can see the the hill that's pointed out. It kind of hovers okay. around the town off in the distance, like it's floating. <laughs> I just mean maybe I mean looming. It's the the tallest okay, area, so you can yeah. even though you're walking uh, the hedges that might be along the roadway or things like that will obscure the view. But over your yeah. left shoulder, behind you, uh, the hill is slowly shrinking as you walk away from it. All right, Potter, what do you think of this Jenny Pierce? Oh, I think she sounds like a Jezebel. That's what I think. Uh you know, it could be so many different things, right? She could be... Oh, we know, you and I both know, she could be one of them. You know, that's what I... Like, oh, I don't it's... always want to go directly to that, but... Something's... Something's not right about that. It's just something... I feel like the, the gears are working, but they're just missing each other. Something... Something's yeah. there. 
well, if we think of the, the history of it, it was there was a standing stone with a witch, you know, and a saint that killed her. Or did he kill her? Well, he turned her into stone, right? Yeah, but how long? Maybe they, maybe something happened up at that stone that released her, unturned uh, her to stone. Would, my theory would be that Daisy's death may not have been uh, perpetuated by that creature, and that uh, maybe somebody released this oh. this troll or witch. Uh, through a sacrifice. Oh, like Daisy was a sacrifice to release. I Maybe. See that. And the sheep are are what's feeding it currently. Possibly. Can I do a, a uh, something, uh, some sort of? I don't know if it's investigation, education, observation. Yeah. Um. About Jenny Pierce. I think that's observation. I don't think so. Thing. Name no, no, not yet. I don't think you've gathered enough clues to roll to to put things together with an investigation roll yet. Can I do one of those rolls? Oh, I'm so blurry. Oh no! Come back to yeah, focus. It's your condition. It's your anger. <laughs> yeah. Can I do one of those rolls uh, concerning? Witches or hags. Dig back into our learning. Is that what that learning rule is? It's going to be blurry from now on, I guess. Oh, man. Do we want to take a quick break? Maybe. All right. I don't know why I'm so blurry. <laughs> Let's come back in five minutes, everyone. Okay. Maybe right. I won't be so blurry. <laughs>
You guys have traveled the road from the village of Brancombe to the small town of Annensbury. Annensbury. Again, anyone over across the pond, I'm sorry for how I pronounce all this stuff. This is just going to be the, the me pronunciation thing game. So you guys know that William uh, Winchcombe. Young, young William. Young William. Yeah, we've been calling him William this whole time. Yeah, we didn't just change that. That's what? No. Uh, is at the Annensbury Police Station, uh, which stands close to the center of town. Um, before going in, you notice that there's like a post office and a bank as well around the center. Um, the buildings are made of the local yellow sandstone, which is weathered to a pale gray. And inside... Uh, there is a wooden counter manned by Sergeant Jack Worrell, who says, The inspector's busy with a, a murder case. What's your business? Murder? That is exactly our ca- No, wrong accent. Uh, yeah, murder. We're exactly... That's not helping. Oh, uh, he's... Uh, we are here too. No, I can't get out of it. Oh no, it's the best. Sir, we've got some questions in the <laughs> Wincombe case. Oh, you're here about that? Like yes, gruesome... we came all the way from from London. Uh, a couple folks back in town asked us to come and deal on the uh, accused's behalf. Oh, well, I wouldn't say there's, we're ready at that stage. Uh, William hasn't uh, had a trial date set or anything like that. This is the uh, inspector's case. As we heard it, you were moving forward without a trial. Is why we're here. <clears throat> no shokels up in Brancombe don't know how this stuff works. No, we're not moving forward with anything. We're just holding William here until the inspector finishes his investigation. Standard procedure. Well, I am Padre Libre, 
and uh, you know, making sure that our the spiritual well being of our people is most important. Uh, and uh, getting helping with this investigation, uh, my companion here, Mister Billy Harkness, is known for searching out the finer details in the woods and beyond. We would love to be able to uh, help settle all this and help gather information for you and for them and for, you know, all parties involved. We'd wish not a single soul to, you know, be unjust. Well, be it's accused of anything. Pretty open and shut case, but uh, if you were wanting to do that, you you need to speak to Inspector Banks. It's his case. Well, that would be... Wonderful. We'd like to speak with uh, Inspector Banks, then. We'll wait. I mean, he's busy, but I can see what I can do. Well, we could go to him, too, if, you know, it would make things no, more No, you, you, stay, you stay right here. And, uh... Right here. The sergeant's gonna get up from the desk and head to the back. We will just sit here reading the good word. <laughs> so uh inside you guys uh standing behind the the counter you can see that there's a kind of a few small offices off to the back and then in the far back is where the uh cells would be where william would be and the sergeant walks into one of the offices and closes the door and you hear like a muffle like well, what do they want i'm busy and well, they said they wanted to talk to you, so they want to help. I don't need any help. I just send them on their way. And, and a few minutes later, uh, the sergeant comes out and he's like, "Oh, with respect, everyone, I think uh, the inspector has it uh, under control." My dear sir, I would like to beseech you and remind you, just like Elisha. You know, with the bears mauling the children, you know, things can happen that are far beyond our normal, you know, scope. And uh, we are known for seeing things a little bit different. If we could have just a few moments of his valuable and uh, expertise, you know, maybe we could help calm our friend the vicar and make sure all of our souls are, you know, Right and well and good. Manipulation? Yeah. I just ran into Tell an interesting thing in here. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Sorry. Uh, Billy is just, at this point, standing behind the Padre, arms crossed. I'm imagining Billy... Uh, taller. Uh, than, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I imagine uh, uh, Padre Libre, rather short, square-looking man, with a big uh, black hat and black robes with the collar and the yeah, yeah. So you don't need a manipulation test on the sergeant. Okay. Uh, instead, the sergeant. Looks pretty frustrated. And he's like, look, if you guys need to talk to someone today, I can direct you to Constable Moore. He's from Brancombe, so. Oh, yes. Yeah. That Z would be the best. He, he's. We just came from Brancombe. Yeah. He, he's a junior constable here. He, he, he works right back there, and I'll, I'll take you to him. And so he takes you to a small corner desk that's piled with papers and all of that. And a uh, tall, slender uh, man in about his 20s is sitting there um, scribbling down some notes and copying some things. The sergeant lets him know that two men from at the request of Longby is here. And he lets you sit. And he just kind of is like, sorry, gentlemen, we're, we're dealing with a murder. We, we don't have time for this today. He's younger. He's oh. got to raise his voice a little bit. I don't have time for this today. My dear, our dear constable, uh, we pray that you will hear us out and uh, uh, 
we understand you're under a lot of pressure. And that's what we've come to help understand and, and uh, smooth out. The vicar summoned us from a very long ways away. We came from London uh, to help him out. America. And we came from the Americas. Long I'm not ways. sure why you would do that. Well, he's worried about justice. Remember in Malachi, that's what he tells his people, to seek out justice. So that's what we're helping, mercy, justice. We want just the best and make sure that there's nothing extra going on. He says there's some things that are odd, like Old Testament odd with weird weather and stuff like that. nothing like that. Not an Old Testament except uh, like maybe Cain and Abel situation here. We've got uh, we've got a murder, pretty open and shut case. Uh, gentlemen are wasting your time. Well, That's why you think it's an open and shut case. What evidence have, do you have that we have not seen yet? Well, it's an open investigation. We're not supposed to talk about it. It's you like can I talk said about it with us. I just met you. You came from America. I, I'm not so sure about that. And uh, oh. Constable Edward Moore is your manipulation test. All right. He is a challenging manipulation test to uh, to speak with you. A few successes necessary. Two successes necessary. Um. Am I able to assist in this manipulation? I imagine so. Okay. You get an extra die for me. Excellent. That'll get rid of the condition. That uh, would be that, and that would be that. So I'm rolling, I think, six. Uh, five for my empathy. And this is manipulation, which I get a one in. You're still so pretty angry, would... last I heard. I am angry. Yeah. Uh, uh, six so minus th- one plus one for me. Yep. So six. So six. <laughs> One, two. There you go. Six, six, five, four, three, two. Thanks, Dice. Constable I Moore, don't... we beseech you. Please. For the people. Well, look, like it's... we said, we came a long way for this and Anything you can give us that can put the town's mind at ease. They're they're just worried about about their livelihoods. They've been uh wild animal attacks and stuff like that. And no, they're all been no wild limited animal on attacks. the same thing. And, wild and we animal. just need to huh. we just need to let them know that everything's under control, that the fine folks of uh of this uh police station have everything under control. Well, I mean, I'm not supposed to tell, but the people of Brancone, they just, they don't know what it takes to run an investigation. It's just as simple as simple could be. Daisy was seen running away from the Mayfair because William was uh, with another woman. Danny Uh, Pierce. Sure, yeah, whoever it was. Uh, They had some kind of falling out, and then Billy... Just didn't. He snapped. Followed Daisy back to uh, to Meg's uh, mound there and did her in. Like I said, just a pretty open and shut case. But just to put our minds at ease, can you give us a timeline for this? When when did things happen? Uh, I've got it in my notes somewhere. And shuffles a few things. We, I think we need to figure out who's in charge of uh, the education and orderlies and uh, notes in Branston there. Brancom. Clearly not to... uh, Edgar Longby. Um, that's what I'm afraid of. My old friend Edgar Longby might be, you know, in charge of it. Everyone from there seems to have their notes not in order. Now that Longby's a good guy. He's, he's the curator <laughs> up there. No, yeah. The, it was... Uh, so, a timeline. We've got... Uh, everybody saw Daisy run away. Mm-hmm. And everybody knows why. And 
it was, yeah, like two days later that uh, that her body was found. And how was her body found? Well, he'd clearly killed her that night, and so some foxes or something had, had gotten to her. Unfortunately, it wasn't uh, who found the body. Who found the body? That's a that's a good question. I think I think Inspector Banks is working on that right now. Um, I'm sure I'm trans. I just transcribed that. Hold on. Hmm. I can't. I dare say. I dare say that's a that's not an accent. Where is it? I dare say. Do declare. I do declare. Oh my, this is just awful. Billy Pierce. Jenny Pierce. Daisy just got ate up by all them coyotes. <laughs> Torn to shrimp. Have, they they Torn don't have coyotes in, around these parts. They got foxes. Oh, where is it? It is coyotes. Oh, I see. Man, I'm going to have to rewrite some of these notes. I mistranscribed them. It was, it was three days, not two, between three days. when Daisy was last seen and then her body was found. And yeah, I think it was... Uh, yeah, her father uh, led a, a search party, and she was found up there. Hmm. Like I said, a pretty open and shut case. I mean, it's clear that William and Daisy met up there near the cave after the fair, and they quarreled, and then William killed her. So hey, now there's a cave. Nobody said anything about a cave. Well, I'm not sure how that's relevant. The Yeah, there's a cave at the top of, uh, of Meg's Mound, near the Standing Stone up there. Dear Constable, do you have any knowledge about Meg's Mound or why it is called Meg's Mound? Uh, there's a stone up there. It's called uh, it's called Meg something. I th it's some ancient tradition of the the town up there. That's all I know. Mm. Not particularly interesting, if you ask me. Oh, and I said. Jenny Pierce. That didn't seem to ring any bells for you, did it? Pierce. I think I think William said something about a Pierce being a like cousin or something. I'm not sure. Cousin to whom? A cousin to whom? Yes. I don't want to tell you how to do your job, Constable, but uh, oh, I'm doing a we good seem job to be here. giving you some some information. I can see that some information that you might want to follow up on. And uh, I think that for the sake of your investigation, William might like to see some friendly faces when you do that following up. If we could talk to him in your presence, of course. Oh, I think we could we could ask a couple questions that might prove useful for your investigation. Mm. Well, Inspector Banks was pretty clear that there should be no outside interference. Well, with you present, you you being a local, especially one from uh, Brancom, am I right? Uh, who could be interfering with that? You know everything that's going on. We w would just be observing. I don't know. I don't want to get in trouble. I like this job. If the banks found out, I mean, he was very clear. How about this? We tell you what questions to ask, and you ask them while we're standing in the background. 
We won't talk to we won't talk to William. Mm, I th I think we're gonna need another roll to convince him. Okay. Let's see. Another ma ma manipulation. Probably or... another manipulation. And, and this one turns another... difficult, interestingly enough. Three successes. Three cool. successes are going to need to be to convince this young constable to put his job on the line for you all. What's another way we can go around that? I think that the uh, where the cells are and where William is being kept is within eye like eye line of like where you're going to head. Mm -hmm. So I would take like a, a stealth roll as well. Like basically abandon your friendly junior constable, sneak back there somehow. How are you at uh, being a ninja? Five. I got four. I can roll four. Uh, one on four is seems more doable than uh, three on six. Never tell me the what? odds. <laughs> We're rolling. Let's see, yeah. Uh... Yeah, what would what sort of would it be? Just a standard roll to to sneak by this guy? Just I to, think so. We're just gonna leave. Because that one's not in the book. You can just leave the old, <laughs> the old Hopco move. <laughs> yep, this isn't working uh, out. We're just leaving. Standard. <laughs> when in doubt, just leave. Back to just London. Leave. Yep. Yeah. Does uh, here's a here's a question. Does the cell have a little window with bars? Mm -hmm. I'm picturing that it's like the old west style Interior. of its full bars all all the way down. Like, but is there a window to the outdoors? Oh, yeah. oh. that we could just go around back. Absolutely. And talk through the window. Absolutely. Yeah. But you still have to you still have to roll a stealth for it. But that yeah, is yeah. an easy justification yeah. for it to be a, just a normal roll. Yeah. Well, thank you for uh, the tremendous amount of help you've been in uh Constable Moore. I'm just doing my job. Uh yeah, you are. Do you have anything else, uh, Padre? Uh spirit to Sancti, yada yada. Uh, good luck to you, kid. Uh yeah, and as we leave, Billy's gonna eyeball the the place. I think he, he can probably see uh -huh. William back there. Mm hmm Kenny. Yeah, he's what sitting is, alone in his cell. What does William look like? Well, let's find out. Together. Young William. Uh, William's not going to be the name I'm going to find him under. Mm -mm. Because his name is supposed to be Billy. Where are you, buddy? Oh, did they not give a description for him? I don't think you're supposed to talk to him. You know, there's no little picture for him? There's no, there's no little picture for him. Oh, and and there's no him. NPC description. What do you guys think uh, William Wincombe looks like? That is wild that we're not supposed to talk to him. It's supposed to be really hard to talk to him specifically. The police yeah, department yeah. does not it, want you to. I can tell that. I'm starting to get angry. No. That's interesting. I would have as we, sworn as we that I saw something. walk outside, and mm -hmm. I would, I'd say to... Uh, the father. It's almost like they don't want us to talk. It's like, it's almost like he, I don't know, like they're trying to hide something, but yeah. they wouldn't be hiding anything. Not this, not in this town. No, I think it's pride. I think. No, I yeah, think... they've got their mind set. Yeah. Something doesn't seem right. I, I think, did you see what I saw? There's a little window in the back that we might be able to. Uh, yeah, I think we could. Uh, hey, hey, hey. Okay. Stealth. 
Stealthy. Hello. So I'm rolling five dice. Lucky. I'm rolling four. Oh, I'm rolling less. Are you? I? Are we both rolling? You only or need you, one roll. No, you, oh, you roll. Yeah, one. And I'll oh, give you I'm one. I'm gonna add. Yeah, add you in. Yeah. I did it with one success. There you go. That was close. So we uh, leave out the front. Look it, both ways as we exit, and then duck down an alley. Yeah, between the, the this tiny window. Yeah, it's like between the the police station and the post office there. Um, can it not be like a high up window, but actually on the ground? Yes. So we have to like. You have to bend over. We have to like, get on the ground. Yeah. Yeah, there's a little set of stairs, and they've like dug out where the cells are, and there's just a little. Yeah. So, so Billy would like stand and like, be looking down. up, yeah. and you guys. Yeah. <sighs> hey, 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 Billy. Uh, who's there? Up here. Up where? Out your window. Come to the window. Huh? But. Who Pretend you? like you're just looking at birds. Tweet, tweet. Look at these lovely birds. Yeah, that's real good. Hey. This is a horror game. <laughs> <laughs> no, we the hey, we're uh we're friends of the Vickers. Oh, you know, okay. Edgar Longby. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're here to Help investigate. You're going to break me one out? One plus one is equaling three here. Things don't always seem to be adding up. Now, I'm Padre Libre. This is my good buddy, Billy Harkness. Billy? That's what We're people from... call me. Oh. Yeah, it's we've been calling a little you confusing, young actually, back down. Well, sorry for the inconvenience, uh. I suppose. <laughs> oh, it's not your fault. It seems the constables are uh, a little bit prideful. Now, hopefully they don't fall too far when they when the pride comes looking for them. Anyhow, hey, yo, know, your whole thing's all weird, dude. Like, now <laughs> <laughs> going Cheech and Chong on us. Here we go. <laughs> well, I like, told them I didn't do it. There's no like, way I could. Hey, can you grow claws and stuff? What? Yeah. Are you like a monster on the inside? That doesn't make any sense. I know. Elevate okay. questions, Padre. Oh, we don't have okay. all that much time. <laughs> yeah. Who's this lady Pierce? And why is she, you know, are you going goo goo gaga all over her? I wasn't going goo goo gaga over her. All right. Where is she from? And, you know, what happened? Look, I didn't kill Daisy. You guys believe me, right? We're trying to. Look. We're trying to, yeah. Daisy just got it all wrong. Ginny Pearson is, is my cousin from out of town. She was coming uh -huh. to visit, and I was just supposed to show her around the fair. Daisy thought that something was going on, and she ran off. And then three days later, find her dead. Uh, just out of curiosity, are we like for real cousin or like just how distant cousin? Yeah, just like are we like royal family cousin? What? No, or are we like she's, she's the daughter of my aunt? Distant is just that she lives out past London. Okay. When did she go home? Be able to find to After the her. fair. I might have some questions for her as well. She went home? She went home. That same after, like, I showed her around the fair the afternoon, and then she got back on the train and went home. Ooh, what care? Did she, really how, how did she get back to... Uh... Something out. <laughs> yeah. But how did she get home? The train. Just Here. Train. Yeah, but how'd she get to this? How did town? you guys get here? No, I'm asking you, you. How did they get here? 
Don't answer his questions. He's asking the work. This is a dead end. I just is it. I just crossed it out. It's a dead end. <laughs> okay. I love uh, Daisy. I was gonna marry her. How many sheep was she worth? I, I, enough. Relevant questions, Padre. The uh, re- answer would be all the sheep in the world. All See, the sheep I had. Loud. I was going to sell them all, and there was enough money to set up our home and barn. See, that's what I was trying to get at. Okay. Hey. So you did not see her for the three days before they found her? No, I didn't know. I knew she, she went missing that night after Ginny left, and the fair was done, and everybody went home. I went around to try and find her the next day, uh, but... Her father hadn't seen her. Nobody had seen her. And it wasn't until three days later that we found her. Tell us about the cave. What about the cave? It's just a small cave at the top of the hill. Do you and Daisy go up there often? Did you go up there often? No. I mean, hmm. her father seemed to think that Daisy went up there often, but... She never took me up there. Why would Daisy go up there? What's up there? Other than the cave. What's in the cave? There's nothing in the cave. It's just a cave. It's by the old standing stone that's up there. Actually, it's a pretty boring place. It's just a, a cave and a stone. You and Daisy never went up there and got all smoochy smoochies? Good sir. I know. I hey, I'm a, I'm a padre. I I have to ask the hard questions. Confession is part of it, you know. Uh, it's a part of the Inquisition, and we have to ask you these things. You're fine. You're fine. You're with the Inquisition? Wasn't that like uh, hundreds of years ago? Uh, it happens more frequently. Padre, than we think. got <laughs> time for maybe two more questions before somebody <laughs> notices what we're doing. <laughs> tweet, tweet, tweet. Okay, what do you got? Uh, Look, if you just looked at the body, you'd know that not a person, it wasn't a person that killed Daisy. You guys have looked at the body, right? We don't even know who has the body. Dr. Mellers has the body. The police here won't talk with us. He's the doctor here in town. Who has the body? Dr. Mellers. He's the he he runs the main surgery here. Uh, that's that's oh, our definitely right. our next stop. It wasn't your first stop. No, we wanted to come to you, make sure you're okay, our boy. I'm fine. I'm innocent. I'm just in jail. Well, that's what we're trying to figure out. Well, okay, police here don't think you're innocent so we well, came to check listening. on you to get your side of the story okay you are our first priority since you are still alive thank you well we're trying to keep it that way so you know when am i getting out well as soon as we can figure out what killed daisy some wolf or something i yeah, thought all you find a wolf Well, you might be able to find a wolf, but I don't know. Do they have wolves in 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 London? How well, in London? I don't think so. Well, That's been a long time since anybody seen a wolf. Be... But I don't know what else exactly. could have done that. I mean, Daisy's dad lost a sheep like the next day before we even found Daisy. It was all mutilated and eaten. Now you tell me what does that other than some kind of like wolf or or bear or something. Ah, I, see. I don't know if you knew this, but wolves have been extinct in England since the 1500s. So it wasn't a wolf. Well, something like a wolf. Maybe maybe people just haven't seen the wolf. Okay, Billy. Is there anything else you can think of that we can help you with? 
Anything you can think of that we can go and search out? I, I don't know. Did you talk to the people in town? They all saw me at the fair. They all knew I didn't do this. Okay, one more question. The thing then. is the, the timeline. The timeline. Ask, ask your question. Oh, uh, what do people like to drink in town? Specifically, you know, like, are you a bunch of ale drinkers? Are you a bunch of imperial stouters? The, you know, the, the, yeah, the, the shepherd's rest is... has an ale. Okay. Is I'm not sure what like that has to do though? about get, with getting me out of here. Oh, uh, lubrication of the peoples helps their mouths flow freer. That way we can get to the bottom of what, you know, what's going on. Billy starts to walk away. <laughs> okay, Bambino, we'll 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 be back. You uh you stay alive. Uh experience Just of Get me the... out of here. <laughs> Why are you tweet, doing tweet, that? Tweet 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 tweet. Uh, <laughs> uh and <end> scene. <laughs> so we're gonna walk around town until we find the the doctor. Okay. Dr. Miller? Dr. Miller. Sure. We'll go with Miller. I'm not sure what Miller what, is. What did you... Dr. Mellers. Mellers? Yeah. M-E-L-L-O-R-S. Okay. Ooh. I heard Millers and just assumed you, you wrote Mill... Read Miller. Okay. Huh? Mellers. Millers? Dr. Mellers. Yeah. He r- maintains a surgery in a large house on the edge of town. You'd find him on the upper floors of the building. Yeah, so we ask around until we Mm -hmm. find him. Absolutely. Excuse me. I'm looking for uh, Dr. Mueller. Mueller? Mueller. Hello. 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 Can I help you, gentlemen? Dr. Mellers? Yes. I was one of you a physician. Uh, yes, I am. Uh, I was with the Jesuits for quite some time, and uh, I was the resident medical uh, liaison for the you know, local mission. I know my way around a needle and thread. Okay. So you're here to help with the, the surgery? No. Uh, no, we're not. <laughs> We are uh, examiners at the moment. Examiners? We're part of the uh, Wincombe investigation. Oh, you're part of that thing. Yeah. Deplorable detective London work. To check things out. Deplorable. Yeah. I say. That's why they called us in. Oh. So are you here for the report that I gave... Inspector Banks, you can get it from him. A lot uh, of good that did. Inspector Banks is not forthcoming with uh, really anything. He doesn't want to we've, play uh, nice. We've been privately hired by the people of Brancombe to investigate this. Okay. Do you have a copy of the report that you gave him? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, let me check my notes. It. I'm sure I didn't send the only copy. I mean, Inspector Banks was quick to dismiss all my theories anyway. Like some young lad's going to mutilate a body like that. There's some kind of bear on the loose. But, well, there are no bears in England. Well, yeah, I heard there's no more wolves. If you'd seen the body, I mean, maybe they're back. I don't know. It was a large creature had ripped the poor young lady to shreds. Organs and... There were parts missing. They were clearly eaten. And if you look at that Any young William, he's not... I don't know. Uh, I'm sure that... Yes, we've got to... I mean, it was... We got some liver and heart and... Yeah, it was, it was pretty... Like, a person doesn't make... Injuries like that. I tried to tell the inspector, but he wouldn't listen. I hate to ask whether uh, bite marks and claw marks, or is it specific organs 
and while taking some and leaving others. I hate to be too graphic, but I want to know to make sure it wasn't just... Yeah, that's what it, it, it's... Some some creature with long claws had ripped apart and ripped uh, mm. uh, to pieces, and then something took bites out of all these organs. Like, there was chunks missing. I was... It's not the work of a human being. I don't know what Inspector Banks is hoping to prove. Oh, that's very unfortunate. Bites taken out of. Um, may we see the body? I don't think the body's available anymore. I think it's been buried. Well, how long has it been? Oh, it's been about two weeks, I think, since the we found her. So it's been been over a fortnight. And uh, who found her again? I'm I'm not oh. sure. Is the Annisbury Police Department brought her here after, so that I could do the 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 autopsy, the the post mortem examination, as it were. But if you so ask in me, your expert opinion, or yeah, what? Huh? No, we want your expert opinion. My oh, expert oh. opinion is that there's some kind of wild creature, large and like a bear, even though there are no bears, that is roaming the countryside and is a grave threat to the agriculture around here. You see um, Dr. Meller's face turning red and he spittles a little bit as he... It just expresses how frustrated he is that the Annensbury Police Department won't listen to him. We understand and sympathize with why you're so angry. It also angers us that uh, such shoddy work is being done on this case when a young man's life is at stake. Isn't it bad enough that his betrothed would be mutilated by this creature? Side note... There have been some other keelings of sheeps. Would ha you happen to notice anything about these sheep killings? Uh, what I've heard, I haven't seen them. It's animals. I don't perform examinations on those. But the sh reports are that are coming in. The stories are that uh, sheep have suffered a very similar fate to what Daisy did. Hmm. We have a liver-loving bear. Okay. Dr. Miller, uh, in your professional opinion, do you think this boy, for the record, could do such a thing? I find it highly unlikely. Uh, there were some sustained injuries to the, the head, but mm. all of that's consistent with a bear attack. Uh, if you want my advice, I suggest that you head back to Brandcom and organize a search party. Find this animal. I think you are wise. Surely the farmers and the uh, hunters up there could track this thing down, put an end to it. It's far more dangerous than, than the lad that they have in the cell. Poor boy. Ah, uh, poor boy. I think, I think that's our next step. Thank you, Dr. Miller. You have been the most valuable person we have talked to in this town. Well, thanks for looking into it. Just be sure you get to, you, you find that creature. Find the creature. Find yes. the creature. Blessings on you. Well, good day to you. And also to you. <laughs> So what you think, Billy? I I think I want to I want to roll some things if if it if it's relevant to see mm -hmm. if those particular missing organs are are useful in any. I, this would probably be more uh, more your speed if those things are, are useful in any uh, ritualistic in, way. Mm -hmm. 
So in like uh, in our previous learning, and uh, or you would you think medicine, or could we or could we combine logic and medicine? I guess it's all the same, but medicine to think of what creature would do it. Yeah, you can take a well, medicine check. We've we've got it sort of the creature narrowed down, right? At this point, have you? Uh, haven't we? What have you narrowed it down to? Uh, from the initial letter, the the uh, animal was out. The the big wolfy things were out, and we were really investigating I think he said witch or hag or something like that mm -hmm. troll those mm -hmm. three words put together yeah witch hag troll witch hag troll yeah, yeah. like man bear pig yeah uh so would those missing or partially removed organs be useful to any of those three sorts of creatures. I think that from the information you got from Dr. Mellors and what was discussed there, that you don't have to have a role to know that the organs appeared eaten, but not in like prepared in a ritualistic way, just like shaken by a creature. Mm. And that's why he's full on like bear. Okay. So, since it's more random than that and not ritualistic, I think we could probably rule out a hag or a, right? Hag or a witch? Well, a witch at least. But, but there's also the blight and the unseasonable weather. Are trolls known for blighting weather and bitter colds? I don't think so. Mm. I wouldn't think so either. I'd like to head up to the uh, Wincombe Farm if we've got time to do that today. I think you would definitely have time to head up there. Mm -hmm. um, from the information you got from Mrs. Hopper, the people you would likely talk to in the late afternoon um, wouldn't be up at the farm per se. They would be at yeah. the shepherd's rest. Okay. I'm interested in seeing what, what's actually happened to these yeah. crops and things. So you can go poke around the farm if you want. They just unlikely to find anyone to speak to. Yeah. Which maybe is your point. Yeah. yeah. All right. What do you uh, think we go poke around that farm and then, head back into the town of the Shepherd's Rest. Talk to the town's folks, see if we can get in any brawls or something. Oh, yes. It's been a long time since we got in a good kerfuffle. So, walking montage? Walking How's that montage. hill looking off to our right as we head <sighs> back into town? <sighs> it looks very similar. <sighs> it's just getting yeah. a little bit bigger as you're walking in its general direction. No mysterious mists surrounding it. No. Strange figures up in up on the crest. <laughs> no, 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 not on the horizon. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it seems unreasonably warm this time of year. I, I <sighs> you're wearing that frock. It's June. I know, but uh, it's you know. All right, I'll unlo I'm I'm button one of my collars. Ooh. <sighs> oh. You know, take your hat off and it's hot like it's Albuquerque. <laughs> oh, my. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so you make it up to the gates of the, the farm and it's shuttered and locked. You get uh, you see the, the no trespassing sign. If you... How do the crops look? 
Are there any animals in the fields? There's some sheep around. Uh, you can see kind of over the hedges. Um, currently, in the late afternoon, the majority of the, the grass seems to have its touch of dew and uh, looks fairly normal from what you can see from the road. There's, uh, let's just do an investigation check from around this area. Or if you want to sneak onto the farm, we'll do a stealth. If you wish to trespass. I don't see a problem with us trespassing. What do you think? Um, although, you know, what do your cowboy eyes see? All right. So if if we were to sneak, could I use my map and compass book to Ooh. buy or map and compass book, my compass and map book to find the place that uh, Ed, Edgar, Edgar was, was pointed out for the, uh, the blight. Oh. I don't think Edgar was precise uh, enough for cool. that to, to help. He would Never have uh, wanted to introduce you to the folks at the Shepherd's Rest, and then a, a guide from their farm could take you to that spot to investigate it. Okay. So since the information in his maps is not particular particularly useful i think i will go with investigation since it's the same role anyway okay yeah i'll give you a one for that okay that is a six one success one success okay yeah so you guys spend some time investigating kind of up and down the, the dirt road on the edge of the farm without uh, going on to the farm proper. The large fields. It's the our home. We don't really want to get shot. Yeah. Uh, that's certainly a possibility that I had. It don't look like much desperados, but you never know. So, as you're looking around more inquisitively, one thing in particular that you find um, kind of up a hill, there's a patch where the the grass is all brown and dead. And uh, some of it's even like blackened. You got like a, a cir circular area that's like all blackened down. And then a good chunk of that hill a little bit further away is all, uh, all the vegetation is um, dead, basically, crispy. Crispy. Yeah, it's a. It stands uh, out strongly as a as a dead grass brown over the bright green yeah. of the fields. Is there any pattern to it? There's. Not really. It just it kind of stretches out of view. So it, it kind of follows along the crest of a hill and then goes off. And so and back towards that area, um, it kind of, you would assume, kind of carries on from there. Do you think that, that must be the blight that they were talking about? Yeah, that's it. I was hoping for... Do you think that's I where know. the I don't I don't quite know what I was hoping for, but I was hoping for a little bit more than than that. Oh, do you think that's probably where that sheep got killed, huh? Probably. It's, yeah. That would Seems be like the, right. the catalyst for it. I could see that. Then it spreads out, then maybe it's going to connect to it. Does that seem to be on your map in line with uh the next farmstead where the other sheep was killed? Is it? I the, mean, there's no real pattern to it, so. 
yeah, the kind of it since it disappears over the hill, you'd have to be on yeah. the the farm to kind of get a better vantage point for it to see where it's heading. But you are on the northeastern side of the farm, and so mm-hmm. to your right and and further to the north it would be the first farm that was pointed to you. And yeah. so there's if we were the, on that side, we yeah, and if we back. look. If we look further in that direction, we we can see the the hill that the standing stone is. Yeah, so you turn all the way kind of around that way. Yeah, so it is sort of a straight line from this farm to that farm to the standing stone. Yeah, breaking up your view is like little woods and thickets and creeks and yeah. things like that. But yeah, you can kind of look and see where a line might be from there. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's not much of a pattern, but it's it's something. What do you say we head back to town and then uh, gather our facts, gather gather our uh, our clues together and see what we come up with? I think that is wise. I think it is, you know, that time. So, yes. So we head back to back to town. It's much easier going downhill. <laughs> Whoa! Heading to, heading to the shepherd's rest. Yes. Maybe like picking places. up, picking up Edgar on the way, and we'll we could discuss a little bit on the way, what he was, what we found. Daisy was Daisy, Daisy Thomas, is that right? Yeah, Daisy Thomas Farm. Yes. Okay. Do you buy that it was just her cousin? There, that the Pierce was a cousin. I don't know. Edgar's uh, letter mentioning hags had me thinking. Uh, just the name Jenny was was ringing a bell. There's a legend of an old hag called Jenny Green Teeth. Oh. Uh, I don't think that has anything to do with what we're doing though. I see. <laughs> I don't. So you guys pick up uh, Edgar and you head to the Shepherd's Rest. Mm-hmm. Right, it's a lots of walking for the day. How are you guys feeling? Oh, I feeling like we're gonna have to take tomorrow off. <laughs> oh, my feet are all swollen. I need oh. to go to sleep. Yeah, put them up. Drink some wine. My home is at your disposal, Edgar. as I said. No, well, thank you, Edgar. You're an excellent host. And that Miss Mary, Miss Mary Hopper, oh my, that was a quite the breakfast. She's quite calm, but I do have to, or, yeah, she's quite a calming presence. But she, I have to warn you, she's a bit of a gossip. So, uh, oh, is she? Yeah, you can take anything she says with a, a grain of salt. Ah, she put plenty of salt on our food this morning. It was seasoned perfectly. <laughs> Could use a little more chilies, but hey, we know how, you know, folks over here don't get much of that. So the Shepherd's Rest is the village pub. It's built of the same, uh, like, golden local limestone that is well-worn uh, to a white and has a stone roof. Uh, there's As you come in, there's a tap room on the ground floor, and some accommodations uh, that the innkeeper has uh, up above. The innkeeper and his family live in uh, the back of the inn. There's a little uh, family house. I don't know what you call that. Apartment. It's probably an apartment. There's a beer, beer cellar underneath. And uh, yeah, you got some taps. You got a uh, few rooms upstairs. Assuming you guys come in and sit down you, and order a drink, the beer at the Shepherd's Rest is typical for the area. It's served at cellar temperature, which is just slightly below the temperature of the tap room. Uh, it's a mid brown color. Let's see. Uh, like Albuquerque's drinking water. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice color. There's some cider uh, available as well. That's pretty strong. Very uh, cloudy. I'll go with the cider. Go with the cider. All right. And there's two 
half empty bottles of a uh, scotch whiskey and a brandy. Uh, now that ooh. I see that, I'm going to go with the brandy. Okay. We'll take two brandies. The uh, bartender kind of like, are you, are you sure? Um, they're covered in like an inch thick of dust. I'm just, uh, I'll be honest with you, I don't know when the last time we opened that was. Uh, and then we'll take two uh, two ales on the side too, just in case. Leave the bottle. Let's see what happens. <laughs> All right. The good call. I always heard it was a sin to let you know bottles collect that much dust, especially when it's liquor. So Edgar, who are you going to introduce us to? Hmm. There's a few people here. I mean, most of the, the village comes in around this time and get themselves some dinner. Uh, I have to tell you that they're not too I trusting to interrupt of... interrupt anybody's meals. Yeah. We might, uh, we might eat and rest here a moment while everybody kind of gathers. But uh, I can point them out to you. Try not to go too southern here. So... The man who served you, he's Albert Bradley. He's a tall, broad man in his early 50s. Jolly, round-faced. Mutton chops and whiskers. Then uh, you guys see a familiar face come in uh, who nobody's really speaking to at the moment. It's Constable Edward Moore, the young junior constable from Hansbury. Yeah, we don't either. <laughs> no. He sits alone at the bar. Gets a gets a beer. Maybe uh, we'll get him a, another one later and give us a little more <laughs> information. Mm -hmm. And then uh, back there, that's Tom and Martin Wincombe. Mm. They're clearly brothers. They're tall, raggedy, blonde hair, blue eyes. Their strong but slender build would suggest that they work well on the farm. And so they those share... are Williams brothers. Mm -hmm. At least I think so. Doesn't say here, but it should. Excellent. Who is the mutton chop guy? The mutton chop guy is Albert Bradley. Why do we care about him? He's just the server. He? He's the person who runs okay. the, the, the inn. The mover and the shaker of the world. The one who knows what's who's coming in, mm -hmm. who's going out, what people eat. The old guy in the back who's basically asleep is old gaffer Ingham. He's the oldest living member who inhabits the village. No one's really sure how old exactly he is, but he'll talk about, talk with authority about anything concerning the village. It's history. I work for a guy like that. Yeah. I got paid to talk about history of our local area. It was fantastic. Okay. There's a, another man who comes in. He's, Small and slender with dark eyes, a tangled mop of black hair. His eyes have a watchful quality to them. And he has the disconcerting ability to leave a room without anyone seeing him go. That's Tom Posse. He He's a local around here. Edgar kind of pauses to give more information about him. He he pauses. He pauses. Yeah. He pauses over it. He's got a scheme. And I suspect that uh 
Fred Thomas will make his way here eventually, but he's not here currently. Uh, Fred's Daisy's father. Mm. Fred found Daisy. Fred found Daisy, yeah. He's he's having a really rough go of it right now. Most would describe him as inconsolable. Now, we went over to uh, the edge of the Wincombe families, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, out of character. If you had gone onto the property unsuccessfully, you would have found David and Matilda, Billy's parents. They are not currently at the Shepherd's Rest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's just about everybody who's worth talking to in town. I suppose we ought to... You got your eye on anybody, Padre? Well, I, uh, it's hard to say, you know, who we should approach first if we talk to the uh, Wincombe bros over there. Is that going to sour our reputation with the Thomases? Hmm. Should they come in? You always split the party. Split the party. Or do you want to go talk to the old gaffer? What do you think? I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to the old talk to gaffer. All right. I feel like he and I have a lot of a lot to uh, a lot in common. Because you like to gaff. <laughs> he's he's just like sleeping in the corner, right? Oh, I. <laughs> he looks how I feel. Oh, yeah. Okay. You go over there. I'll go over here. All right. So Edgar Lonby is one person. He can go with one of you. And it might be whomever doesn't feel they can empathize enough with the local folk. They're just not too sure about those furners. Yeah, I, I feel good about Gaffer. Okay. You want to take along and be with you? Yeah. Right. Uh, I have a high empathy. Just you know. <laughs> oh, I don't. I know. Just saying. This guy. This guy just wants somebody to listen to him. As far as that description goes. <laughs> But you are outsiders from town. Mm -hmm. So it takes an empathy roll. One success. Get them to l talk to you. Empathy. Do you have long be with you? It goes down to you don't have to make a roll. Which of the empathy? Your choice. Skills. However you wish to. If you want to inspire or manipulate or... I guess even observe with him. I do want to do observe for Gaffer. I want to uh I want to get the picture of who they are before approaching them. Okay. Do you want to talk to like Albert about him? Get a better understanding of who he is. No, you can go straight. Yeah, he runs the end. Yeah. They would all tell you it's old Gaffer Ingham. Yeah, he's just an oldie. He likes to tell a story. Well, I'm not going to succeed on this role, so Let's see what happens. Nope, did not succeed. Still going to walk up, mm -hmm. put my drink down on the table. And uh, how how asleep is this guy? I think as you set down the drink, he kind of snorts awake. <laughs> oh, who's this? Hey there. 
name's Billy Harkness. I'm from out of town. <laughs> Clearly not from here. No, but I've I've got a keen interest in this place. I hear that you're the person to talk to. You have a habit of waking people up from their sleep. I was going to wait until you woke up. I shouldn't be making so much noise then. I guess he's going southern. <laughs> guess you shouldn't be sleeping in a pub then. This has been this town, this village has been my home longer than anyone can remember. That's what I hear. That's why I came to talk to you. Is there anything in particular you were hoping to talk about? Well, I was hoping to talk about history. I was hoping to talk about maybe some mythology surrounding the place. But, uh, you know? Hmm. If you don't want to talk tonight, that's, that's fine. Maybe we'll uh, catch up tomorrow. It starts to stand up. Oh, so, so you're planning on bugging me until I can talk to you, huh? Sit down, sit down. Yeah. I've got Maybe a, I am. I got a story for you. He sits back and uh, sips his drink. <laughs> I like the quote under here, but I can't figure out how to, to work it into the next clue that he's got for you. So I'm just going to read it to you. He's supposed to start his stories with, this was before you were born, but I remember it well enough. That's the descriptor for this guy. So, old gaffer, old gaffer Ingham, he's, he just, once he starts talking, it's really hard to get him to stop. Even when you fail on a roll. Even when you fail on a roll, because the GM might have found that there wasn't a roll required for him in particular. Cool. Uh, Perfect. Yeah. So instead, we took the role as you didn't notice that he was only lightly sleeping. Yeah. So he gave you a hard time. But that's it. That's all that was needed. Let's see. So I think the first thing that old gaffer Ingham reveals to Billy is that uh, Daisy had actually been talking to him. Uh, about the legend of old Meg in particular that the hill's named after the hill's named after yeah she had she seemed really fascinated by it and maybe she was just humoring an old man but it was nice to talk about it not a lot of folks are interested in history anymore the legends of old but she she said that she felt like a connection to the cave up there Like that she she felt akin to the the witch of legend. There's, the witch was no monster in her mind, she'd say. Just some more of a woman who wouldn't bend a knee to a man. At least that's what she thought. <laughs> she had some right modern ideas in that direction. That young Daisy. So, apparently she'd been visiting it regularly. Had she been uh, taking that boyfriend of hers? Nah, that young William, he wouldn't have understood. She went up there to be alone. Nobody else seems to pay mind to that old legend of old Meg anymore. But I remember it well enough. Do I remember it well enough? Do you want to hear it? <laughs> heard something about a saint mm, is that mm -hmm. part of the story yeah for some reason it's in three different places in this book and so I want to give you old gaffer's version <laughs> yeah so, like, like I said, this was before you were born, but I remember it well enough. The legend of Old Meg is also the legend of Saint Biren. Saint Biren. Yeah. Saint Biren had traveled up to Gloucestershire. Gloucestershire? 
Worcestershire. I'm sorry again, everyone. Uh, <clears throat> while converting, uh, St. Mirren had traveled up here to convert the, the pagan Anglo-Saxons in the area. And while he was here, the saint battled an evil witch and turned her into stone by the power of his prayers. And that's where the name Old Meg came from for the Standing Stone. That's said to be the witch. But the witch was, Old Meg was not a, a mortal witch like we would assume. She was some kind of monster. The Anglo-Saxons used to call them old-time folk. Yeah, it's folk in here. I'm gone so southern. <clears throat> <laughs> The, the people around the village would leave livestock to satiate her, and sometimes condemned criminals. But that St. Biren, he, uh, he had a cudgel that was blessed, and he used it to defeat the old Meg. Now, some say that her old-time name was Mog, and others say that she was the sister of Morgan Le Fay. King Arthur's time. And that she can't be killed. Only driven back into her stone form. But St. Biren did beat her back with that cudgel into her stone form. And there she stood. Hmm. And he kind of dozes off a little bit after that. That's a good story there. Yeah. Let me buy you your next drink. Much obliged. <laughs> uh, so you've heard about the, uh, the, the the killed livestock around town. What what kind of kind of stock do you put in stories like this? Well, I mean, if you ask me, I think that, uh, I think Meg woke up. What do you think, uh, you know, Daisy's been visiting this cage, cave, she felt a connection to, to Meg. What do you think she's trying to accomplish? I think she just felt a connection to it. She wasn't talking about anything specific. It's just like where she liked to go. Hmm. Well, you've left, left me with a lot to think about. Thanks for the story. I'll uh, be sure to catch you next time we're, we're in the shepherd's rest and maybe you could tell me another one. I think I'd like that. I like you listening to stories. I like you too, uh, Gaffer Ingham. I got a few stories for you too. I, I could tell you about the uh, <laughs> battles out west, the ghost soldiers walking on the battlefield. It's most peculiar. You'll like it. And over for Padre. Where were you heading? Uh, he was going to go over and talk with the Wincombe boys. Wincombe boys. What do you want to say to the Wincombe boys? Um, I think Padre's goal is to try to figure out if they feel their brother did it, if what their take on Daisy was, and if in fact there was a cousin, is AJ their hung up cousin. on it? 
Is is AJ hung up on Boss the cousin off thing? Off my list. <laughs> ah. As you uh, as you approach the two uh, Wincombe brothers, Tom and Martin, you can tell that they've been drinking rather heavily, mm-hmm. and they are in fact in the middle of an argument with Albert Bradley, the innkeeper. He's, oh, go home, lads. Sleep it off. That's it. You're done. I'm like, no, no. You don't understand. Pour another uh, one. And right. uh, there's a the sound of the door opening to the shepherd's rest mm-hmm. as this argument's going on. And in walks Fred Thomas, Daisy's father. The voices mm-hmm. of the young lads gets louder. Fred Thomas looks uh, red-eyed, unshaven, disheveled. He's clearly broken by the loss of his daughter and being the one to find her. Mm-hmm. And the Wincombe brothers see him come in and there's some palpable tension in the air. And they begin pointing fingers. I'm saying, you reported, you reported young Billy and now he's arrested. This is all your fault. And Fred stands there silently taking the, the abuse, clearly not able to really speak up for himself. Mm. And they start staggering closer to him. Would this be a, uh, I would say leadership role if we were playing Genesis, <laughs> but uh, inspiration, inspiration. Yeah. I think some kind of empathy role is, is here. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's not observation because observation when talking to another person or spending time in their presence you can observe uh, to understand what or uh, to use observation to understand what they're thinking, feeling, or planning um, but inspiration is ability to address crowds, encourage and guide your friends Mm-hmm. Create understanding. So I think, and then manipulation is manipulate them to how they think and feel and act mm-hmm. by flirting, lying, and bribing. So I think inspiration would be the way to go. Okay. Flirting. Flirting. Oh, uh-huh. yeah. I, I would have to use my. Franchise head. Oh. <laughs> uh, but I'm not doing French. Uh, okay. Uh, let's go with uh, inspiration. So that is five plus two minus one because I'm angry. All right. Uh, tell me a little bit about what you say to the, the crowd before you roll. Uh. I think Padre would stand up and uh, do his best to calm the boys and have them realize the father's loss in this moment that he can, they can empathize with the father. Just like they're losing their brother in this. It wasn't just for her to die and it might not be for him, but we have to figure out another way. Okay. All right. You just need the one success. It's a normal roll. And now, boys, uh, excuse me. Now, I do not think I, I'm going to have to get a little frightened here that things aren't going to be working because uh, I did not roll a single six. So I'm going to push this roll and... Uh, and take another I think mental these, condition. I'm going to take another mental, because I think these boys are, I think they're really hot. I think the ale is flowing and where Padre normally would go with uh, tequila shots for everyone. Uh, I think he knows better than to uh, push any more alcohol. And uh, and so he's going to 
re-roll. Okay. It's not like, you know, empathy is... There we go. We got two on that roll. Two CXs. For inspiration. All right. Two. Uh, uh, uh. Um. Okay. I don't want to heal. I want to influence the thoughts and actions of a group. Um, doing our best to calm the boys down and have them empathize with the dad so that we can get a posse rounded up to see if we can figure out what all's going on. I'm not sure about that second part, uh, but the guys, the the two boys, take your uh, empathetic, inspirational mm -hmm. advice, uh, realizing that uh, Fred Thomas is in deep pain at the moment, and while they are more concerned about their current predicament of their family, they don't come to blows. They've been talked off the ledge, and they kind of huff and ungratefully even bump shoulders probably on poor Fred Thompson as they head out the door. They head off into back home for the night. And I think that is a great place to leave a cliffhanger for next month. Cool. Excellent. So thank you everyone for joining us here for Hop Company. We'll continue the adventure next month to see what all of these clues are. Give you some time to percolate on them about what to do next. Wait a yeah. month. <laughs> a month. But, uh, but yeah. we will be back. So uh, all the YouTube stuff, you guys be sure and like and subscribe to the Dicey Cantina. There's also uh, Mark Does Nightcast uh, at the what, – what's your – the YouTube channel. Is it Course on Nights or Nightcast? Enough. Come come follow on um, search for Nightcast. I don't have a uh, enough followers yet to get the vanity URL. So well, let's get search there. for Nightcast Creative. So everybody help, go help me get enough people that it can be youtube.com slash you or whatever slash C. Nightcast Creative. C yeah. slash Nightcast Creative. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so with all the clues that you've heard tonight and rewatching this on YouTube, be sure and comment as well who you think did it or what you think did it or how, yeah, how you lie. think did it. One of those things. Anyway, all in all, when, I'll, I'll leave when. <laughs> when, when, when you think did it, there we go. Perfect. Yeah. And is there really a cousin? Is there really a, cousin? is it really a cousin? Or am I just thinking that you're just, it's, or is, I can't Here. wait till next month when we answer all these questions for Meg. AJ. I think it's Meg. <laughs> I think it's Meg. I'm convinced. Bye, everybody. Hit the music.